Hey Jojo, it's Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I am pleased to announce that this is my 500th video. So it's an honor to make your Polo 5089 color 9281 which is the semi-black, semi-realness frame in the 54 eye size. Let's go ahead and take it out of your Ralph Lauren box, your Ralph Lauren case. Of course, Deep down in here is your Ralph Lauren Polo cleaning cloth, and it's actually one of the largest cleaning cloths of any of the manufacturers that they give out. But let's go ahead and open up the star of the show. It is, as I mentioned, the Polo 5089 and the semi matte black. Of course, it has this is the titanium. Of course, let me back up for a second. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from while it's being shipped overseas, and I'm going to include that when I ship to you. But it has the RL, the Ralph Lauren initials on the sides. A great semi-rimless frame. Extremely lightweight. These are the titanium temples making it very strong and lightweight. And of course one of the things I love is the faux wood finish on both of the temples. That just really makes this frame. This is one of my favorite polo frames. And I'm pleased to be able to do this for my 500th video. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, the way I do these... I normally trace the frame right here, but this time being semi-rimless, I need to trace the lens. So, let me grab a pen. I have this graph that gives me a straight line. I'm going to put your frame on there, and I'm going to put two dots. Hopefully, you don't miss any of this. I have to raise my head up to see. Clearly, I have to hold it up to the light there. We are good. But I put two dots on your lenses. That gives me a straight line, a straight meridian, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this out now. I've got to find my tracing pad. Here it is. I'm going to get a little sticker, which I keep up here. I'm going to place that on there, pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. And now I am going to line up your lens. On the back here is a another line. And that is going to tell me that I've got it on there straight. I apologize if you're missing any of this. I am a, as I tilt my head up, I'm a licensed optician, professional licensed optician here in North Carolina. I'm not a professional cinematographer. But I'm going to wake up the computer. I'm going to tell it that I want it to trace the right lens. And I'm going to hit that green circle to start. It's going to ask me for the bridge size, which is 18. That is there. I'm going to check that. But this little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Ralph Lauren Polo frame and you're gonna receive one clear, one free clear pair of single vision prescription lenses. And that is what you're getting tonight. Of course, my receipt has my federal ID tax number. So if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Jojo, you know you need a prescription. But if you're out there and you have vision insurance in your 2020 and you want a beautiful pair of glasses to wear at the office or at the club or the coffee shop, this is a great one to do it. So that's, that is the shape of the lens I've cut. It's only magnified. Let me minify it down to real size, that green outline is the shape of the lens. I'm going to magnify it as I continue to work. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance for your right eye, which is 31. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to hit this minus button a couple times. It's going to come down in half millimeter increments, and I will stop at 31. So let's go ahead and come down here to the lensometer, and I'm going to go ahead and get your lenses dotted up. I'm going to, well, let's turn on the lensometer. Let's get everything zeroed out. Hopefully, again, I don't miss any of this. I'm going to put the axis wheel on five. Your prescription reads minus one and a quarter, minus one at zero, zero, five. Minus one and a quarter, minus one at zero, zero, five. Put the power drum on minus one and a quarter, which is your spherical component. Let me make sure everything's zeroed out. We're good. So minus one and a quarter. Take this out. I'm going to put your lens in. I'm going to rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center, check your astigmatism correction, everything is lining up there. And I'm going to put three dots on your lens, which is a little bit hard for you to see. It's hard for me to see too, so let's go one. Let me hold that up again to that white background of the paper towel so I can see it. One, two, and three. And this is the right lens, so I'll put an R on that. Your left lens reads minus 250, minus 50 at 170. Minus 250, minus 50 at 170. 
put the power drum on minus 250. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve, put it into the lensometer, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center, move everything into place just like the crosshairs of a scope. Check your astigmatism correction, of which I'll explain in a little bit. All of that looks good, and let's go ahead and put the three dots on your lenses. One, two, and three. And this is not the left, I mean, not the right lens, so I'm going to put an L on there. And if you missed any of that, let me recap. Oh, it's a bad joke, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. I promise you will. Okay, so we're going to come down here. I'm going to take your right lens and place it onto the platform. What I have here is a block. I like to call him Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker for those, which I keep up here. I'm going to grab two of those. I'm going to stick one onto the first block. We'll do the same thing now for the second block. Now on the back is a little silver magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first job is to hold it in place in the arm of the blocker. The second time will be in the edger. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the paper away and give the magnet a chance to work the first time around. I'm going to take it and it's going to stick to something magnetical in the arm. I'm going to... The reason why I put those three dots on there is that I want to line up your lens just perfectly. Because of your astigmatism, it has to go in there perfectly. It cannot be oriented any off kilter or you're just not going to see as well. So I'm going to line up your lens. That little, The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If you were to measure vertically and horizontally, that's where that blue cross would be. Your eye is just inset from there. So hopefully you can see this orange crosshair. But I've got that in your optical center, that center dot. Those other two dots are lined up on the meridian telling me that it's in there straight. I'm going to hit this button and then the arm's going to come down and place the block onto your right lens. We'll take your right lens and set it there. We'll take the unright lens put it onto the platform. Your pupillary distance for your left eye is 30. So again, I'm going to hit the minus button twice until we get to 30.0. Place the lens onto the platform. The dot goes in the optical center. These other two dots tell me that it's lined up perfectly. I'm going to hit this button and now I'm not going to do nothing because I forgot to take the paper off to put the sticker on there. So. Let me pull up the shape of your lens one more time. Repeat that just for fun. Let's go ahead and block the right lens with nothing there. It's just going to go down and pretend to do its job. Just like me, I'm pretending to do my job. I need to pay attention and work better. See, look at that. See how nice and sticky that pad is? So we're back over here. We're back to 30. I'm going to put that there for the optical center. Line up those two dots. Now I'm going to drop down. And now the block is going to be applied to your left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, and then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore. But the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. And then this wheel here, well, this wheel in the center is going to flatten out any rough edges, and then there's going to be a little cutting blade that's what's going to cut a groove into your lens so it stays inside this string, this monofilament. So I'm going to go ahead and take your right lens and let the magnet do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. I am going to wake up the computer. And that is the shape of the lens I will cut. I do not want to polish the edge of your lenses. I do not want to put... Actually, I do want to put a slight bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. And I want to put a heavier bevel on the rear concave surface of your lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. I'm going to hit the green start button. The door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And it is, you can see as it's going around tracing it. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to cut the groove into the lens. So it finds the middle of the lens so you have the best cosmetic look possible. Now just a moment, the cutting wheel is going to move over. It's going to start spinning. If you see light flickering in the background, that is water. It's only there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index lenses cut wet. 
In just a moment, your lens will touch down onto the cutting wheel. Now, if you notice, I mentioned I said your lenses are polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and will never need to be reapplied. If you notice your lens is completely flat around the edges, it's like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on its own. Plus, you can see some of the optical sawdust that is still around the lens. That is called Schwarf. For all you Mel Brooks fans, this is when I'd say, may the Schwarf be with you. But at the end of the cutting cycle, water will kick in and wash all of that off. So it has its own check and balance system. Again, it's gonna measure one more time to know exactly where to cut the bevel into the lens. So it's going to come back down and just smooth out any rough edges that are left over before cutting the bevel. Cutting the groove, I should say. So a little arm is a lever is coming out at the end of that lever is a spinning wheel something you would find on a dremel tool and now that sharp blade is cutting the groove into the lens it is no longer flat you could run your thumbnail through that groove that's how it's going to be held in place by the string In just a moment it will finish, there we go. Again, it's gonna come back down on the center wheel to smooth out any rough edges that may be left over from the grooving process. Now water has begun spraying. It does that for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris. Optical sawdust, if you will. And now again, the lever is gonna come out at the end of that lever. Instead of the spinning blade, which is on the left, you have the bevel wheel. It's applying the safety bevel to the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. Now it's going to move over and do the same thing on the concave rear surface of the lens. I'm going to put a slightly stronger bevel on there just in case this ever comes in contact with the cheek. It will be smooth and not have any rough edges whatsoever. All right, we are done.
in just a moment I will open this door with my mind grab a paper towel to dry your lens off now I can do other things with my mind I can melt ice with my mind I can it just takes me a couple hours but I can do it so I just want to run my thumbnail along the edge to get off any optical debris that can still be there hopefully you can see that against the darker background and I scrape it off and then I let it drop onto the floor and I remind everyone out there that kids I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this so if you want to grow up and make a mess you gotta stay in school so everybody wants to know how to mount a lens like this into the frame and I will show you you've heard the old saying you have to have the right tool for the job that tool is a little piece of ribbon for wrapping presents I'm gonna line the lens up you have a groove a string here in the bottom you have the same thing here in the top of the frame I'm gonna line it up in this groove here in the top of the frame and then grab the reason why it's folded in half I want to grab both sides and I would tuck it in at the outside corner and I work my way towards the nose and when you hear the snap it is in there I use my finger to press down onto the string and then I slide the strap out and we are good to go. Let's go ahead and remove this block. It is no longer needed nor is this sticker. And let's go ahead and begin cutting the left lens. I'm going to put that in there, flip that over to L, which again stands for not right, and hit the start button. Just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts. And then it's going to be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape and then to the top and of course as always measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the perfect 50 percent groove all the way around the lens so let's go ahead and i'm going to come back down here and we're going to inspect your lens while the left lens is cutting I'm going to put it in. Let me darken this dot for you. That is your optical center. I'm going to put that in there. And just above that red dot, I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 5. It's on 170 now because we had just done your left lens. So we're going to go back to 5, which is exactly halfway between 0 and 10. I'm going to check the power of the lens. And I'm getting minus 1 and a quarter. One tick mark away from one, 150, 175, two. So, now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero, which we in the business call Plano, which everyone else calls the city in Texas. But it goes up in quarter increments from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. You have five steps of far-sighted correction. You are nearsighted. Without your glasses on, everything up close is clear, but if you try and reach something further than arm's reach, it starts to get blurry. So you need five steps of minification for your for your far-sightedness. That is why there's a minus sign on. You need it. You need everything to be minified down to the correct size. Now, after you have five steps of minification, you need an additional four steps of astigmatism correction. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. Everyone freaks out when they hear that word, but you don't freak out when you hear someone has curly hair, although I do. And uh, although it's starting to get more gray, and that's what's causing me to freak out. But so you need five steps of minification for far side and an additional four steps to make everything clear. Think of astigmatism correction as the fine tune knob. And we're gonna turn that knob to five. A straight line with the red cap is at zero to 180 on the other side, 90 in the center, 180 over here, 270 at the bottom for those of you in geometry keeping score at home. So we're gonna turn that knob just past the 180 line to five. Now let's go ahead and check your astigmatism correction. When I remember high school algebra where you add the like signs together one and a quarter and one well don't worry i've forgotten high school algebra too let's use today's terms if someone had borrowed a dollar 25 from you and then they borrowed another one dollar they would owe you two dollars and 25 cents let's check your astigmatism correction and we're at two and a quarter now just past two so essentially you have 
Astigmatism means your eye is not perfectly round. You have one and a quarter, you have a curvature going this way and you have a second curve going this way. And it's how we line up those two curves at, at number five. Now, your left eye, you need 10 steps of far-sided correction, but you only need two steps of astigmatism correction. So we're gonna end up with a final power of minus three when we add these two together. And we're gonna turn that fine tune knob to 170. We're gonna start at zero and go all the way past 90, almost to the 180 line at 170. Now these first, these last numbers could be anywhere from zero to 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. Now you may think that five and 170 are very far apart, but they're not. If you think of a straight line, again, being zero to 180, your right eye, you're only five steps away from the 180 line. Your left eye, you're only 10 degrees away from the 180, so you're still very close to the 180. Those numbers are not very far apart at all. It's just, you'll, you'll learn that with, with geometry if you haven't already. So, let's come back down here. Let's see where we're at. Looks like the groove has already been cut. It's gonna drop back down and on to the smoothing wheel to take out any rough edges. Before water kicks in to wash the lens away. Say that reminds me, I need to take a bath. So out comes the lever. It's going to apply a safety bevel to the front surface of the lens. Just smoothing out those edges, filing it down if you will. Now it's going to do the same thing on the back surface of the lens. All right, Jojo, I tell you what, on the count of three, why don't you go ahead and open this door? One, two, three. Jojo, that's pretty good. First day on the job. You opened it just right. So let's take the lens out. Let's dry everything off. Use my thumbnail. Again, let's remove all of that optical debris. I love it when it comes off in one piece. That's like when you clean the lint trap in the dryer and it comes off in one piece. Isn't that great? So I'm going to carefully collect that very neatly and precisely. Scrape that off onto the counter. Let's do the same thing for the back surface now into the groove itself and once it's all on the counter I carefully and neatly collect it into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor <laughs> because that never gets old all right let's go ahead and take this this off that is no longer needed nor is this sticker come back down here let's dry off the center of the lens too while keeping that red dot in the center let's go ahead and grab the strap grab the frame let's go ahead and take out your demo lenses the last one put this in here and again grab the strap on both sides I start at the outside corner and work my way towards the nose and when you hear the snap it is in there put my thumb onto the string and then slide that out we can come back down here to the lensometer I'm going to spin the fine two knob to 170 and put it in just above the red dot again your optical center there that's going to sit directly in front of your pupil and when i check the power i am getting minus 250 exactly halfway between two and three i'm going to check your two steps of astigmatism correction and we end up with minus three so that is made perfectly your pupillary distance is 31 for your right eye 30 for the left for a combined value of 61. i'm going to turn the card around so you can see the red dots. I'm going to place the zero against my thumb on your right lens. And then when we hold it up to the left, we're getting 61 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. Of course, this is the time in every video 
that I explain when we receive these in the mail, of course free shipping anywhere in the US, but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side, oops, I missed a spot. There's an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. But because of that, 99% of all optical shops do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your local place. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to get it adjusted should you need it. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and I press down on the counter, they wobble there, but they sit level on me. For those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair in color 6144, which is the silver metallic. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. So, and also I'm gonna include uh, one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths. Anyone with a smartphone with the QR scanner or the Google glasses or the Google barcode reader, you can scan that to pull up my website. But I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it cleans properly. I don't want to send you a defective cloth. But I'm also going to give you instructions not only how to care for your eyeglasses and lenses so they last you for years, but for your polo case, your polo cleaning cloth, and of course, you're going to get one of my cleaning cloths with instructions on how to care for these so they'll last you for years. I also include a selfie request to have your picture on the website. Jojo, I'd love to have your pictures there to have on the website. But again, it has been my privilege to film and record my 500th video for you, Jojo. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me through the contact button on the website or email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Jojo, where's my flashlight? Here we go. Hopefully it'll come up. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for your Polo 5089 in color 9281, which is the matte shiny black in the 54 eye size. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.